Just type Coast Guard into the search bar. The prayer will be offered by our chaplain, Father Conroy. Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for giving us another day. We pause now in your presence to acknowledge our dependence on you. We ask your blessing upon the men and women of this, the people's house, who are settling into new spaces and committees here on Capitol Hill. As the new session begins, help them and indeed help us all to obey your law, to do your will, and to walk in your way. Grant that they might be good in thought, gracious in word, generous in deed, and great in spirit. Make this a glorious day in which all are glad to be alive and ready to serve you. And may all that is done this day be done for your greater honor and glory. Amen. The chair has examined the journal of the last day's proceedings and announces to the House his approval thereof. Pursuant to Clause 1 of Rule 1, the journal stands approved. For what? What purpose does the gentleman uh, seek recognition? Mr. Speaker, pursuant to Clause 1, Rule 1, I demand a vote on agreeing to the Speaker's approval of the journal. All right. The question is on agreeing to the Speaker's approval of the journal. Those in favor say aye. Those opposed, please say no. It appears that the ayes have it. The journal stands approved. Mr. Speaker. For what purpose does the gentleman from Kansas seek recognition? Mr. Speaker, I object to the vote on the grounds that a quorum is not present and make a point of order that a quorum is not present. Pursuant to Clause 8 of Rule 20, further proceedings on this question are postponed. The Pledge of Allegiance will be led by the gentleman from Kansas, Mr. Watkins. The chair lays before the House a communication. The Honorable the Speaker, House of Representatives, sir, on January 4th, 2019, your designated you designated me to administer the oath of office to Representative-elect Walter B. Jones of the 3rd District of the State of North Carolina, pursuant to House Resolution 22-116th Congress. Under such designation, I have the honor to report that on January 4, 2019, at Farmville, North Carolina, I administered the oath of office to Mr. Jones. Mr. Jones took the oath prescribed by 5 U.S.C. 3331. I have delivered two copies of the oath signed by Mr. Jones to the Clerk of the House of Representatives. <coughs> signed sincerely, G.K. Butterfield, Member of Congress. Under Clause 5D of Rule 20, the Chair announces to the House that in light of the administration of the oath to the gentleman from North Carolina, the whole number of the House is now 434. The chair will entertain requests for one-minute speeches. For what purpose does the gentlewoman from Georgia rise? Without objection, the gentlewoman is recognized for one minute. Seven years ago, my son was violently torn from my life, a victim of gun violence a victim of a person who had a gun who should never have received one. Today, I join my colleagues and former Congresswoman Gabby Giffords to prevent more families from facing the horror and heartbreak wrought by gun violence. Later today, Congressman King and Congressman Thompson will introduce bipartisan legislation to ensure that no one is able to get a gun from an unlicensed sale without a background check. Background checks empower law enforcement to keep guns out of the hands of criminals and domestic abusers. Quite simply, they save lives. 
I am honored to co-sponsor this bipartisan legislation for my son Jordan and for the safety of every family in this country. And I ask my fellow parents, my fellow members, and my fellow Americans to stand with me today in support of universal background checks. Together, we will make our community safer. Thank you. I yield back. Yes, those in the gallery, please do not respond to the members. For what purpose does the gentleman from Kansas seek recognition? Mr. Speaker, I ask unanimous consent to address the House for one minute and to revise and extend my remarks. Without objection, the gentleman is recognized for one minute. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Many Kansans have followed the path from military to political service. Names like Pompeo, Roberts, Dole, and Eisenhower. I stand on the shoulders of giants. I do so with humility and with gratitude that the people of Kansas have bestowed upon me such an honor. To my fellow Kansans, I won't let you down. To my colleagues, we'll have our disagreements and our debates. We should. But we should also maintain civility and integrity. And we should work to make the government more efficient more accountable, and more effective. God bless the 116th Congress, the great people of Kansas, and may God bless the United States of America. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I yield back. Thank you. For what purpose does the gentlewoman from Massachusetts seek recognition? Mr. Speaker, I ask unanimous consent to address the House for one minute. Without objection, the gentlewoman is recognized for one minute. Mr. Speaker, I rise today in opposition to the occupant of the White House. Mr. Trump, you took an oath, just as I did five days ago, to protect and defend the Constitution and the American people. Sir, you dishonor that oath. You devalue the life of the immigrant, the worker, and the survivor. I see right through you, and so do the American people. This has nothing to do with border security. Your shutdown, another Trump-generated crisis, has brought a tsunami of hurt to the American people. So today I rise to lift the voices of the unheard. I rise today on behalf of the families concerned about feeding their children because their WIC benefits will run dry. I rise today in solidarity with the thousands of workers with callous hands and broken spirits working for no pay. I rise today in support of the survivor fleeing violent hands, seeking safety only to find the shelter door locked because of your shutdown. I rise today in support of the American people who believe in the promise of this nation and ask for honest pay for an honest day's work. Today I rise as one and I stand as thousands. Thank you and I yield back. Members are reminded to refrain from engaging in personalities toward the president. For what purpose does a gentlewoman from Puerto Rico rise? Without objection, the gentlewoman is recognized for one minute. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I today introduce the Child Tax Credit Equity for Puerto Rico Act of 2019. Under the current law, the Child Tax Credit only applies to families who are raising three or more children in Puerto Rico, and the rest of the nation is just with one or two child. In comparison with families living in the mainland, Puerto Rico never got a tool to work out uh, this poverty line. Small families consisted of one or two children are excluded from receiving this necessary benefit. The purpose of the child tax credit is to be a tool to help those families to offset the expenses of raising children and raise themselves out of poverty. Mississippi has the highest poverty level of any state. Puerto Rico poverty rate is now at 45%. That's 178% higher than Mississippi. According to the Census Bureau, the lowest household income at Puerto Rico is $19,000 a year compared to $43,000 in the states of Mississippi and $61,000 average in the whole mainland. This proposal will help Puerto Rico's economy and benefit about 355,000 families and more than 404 children in Puerto Rico. I urge my colleagues to support and pass this bill, and I want to thank Congressman Jose Serrano, uh, Fitzpatrick, and Duffy for being original co-sponsors of this bill. With that, I yield back the balance of my time. The chair announces the speaker's appointment pursuant to section four of 
the United States Semi-Quincentennial Commission Act of 2016, Public Law 114-196, and the Order of the House of January 3rd, 2019 of the following member on the part of the House to the United States Semi-Quincentennial Commission. Mr. Evans of Pennsylvania. Pursuant to Clause 12A of Rule 1, the Chair declares the House in recess until approximately 4 p.m. today. And the House back at